In the headlines, the opening of Cabrit's Resort Kempinski later this year to transform the North, a new cohort of Cuban nurses to improve the nursing profession impacted by migration, and the Faculty of Health Sciences of the Dominica State College opens a new medical skills simulation lab. I am Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. Thank you for staying with us. First up, a complete transformation of the North as the Cabritz Resort Kempinski nears completion. Range Developments is spearheading the construction of this five-star resort, which is located in Cabritz, Portsmouth. Cabinet visited the site on Wednesday with Prime Minister Scarrett saying the increased number of rooms in the North and in Dominique on a whole will transform the tourism sector and country by extension. And we're going to see before very eyes the complete transformation of not only this part of the country because Jungle Bay just opened, um, have, have already started receiving tremendous um, interest in, in bookings um, and of course uh, we have the Rainforest uh, Resort in Loda, in, 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 the, in the valleys in Loda. Um, so there are a number of, of very positive things and there's another proposal for a hotel um, in Rosa. And um, I think very soon we'll be in a position to sign off on this hotel as well, um, which will certainly enhance the opportunities and so on. So in the next three, four years, we're going to have an additional maybe close to a thousand or so rooms. And that will bring the critical mass. And that will help justify the construction of the, of the international airport. And, and once, you have, once you have hotel rooms, once you have guests coming in, then you will see an improvement in the air access for Dominica. Mr. Skerritt says he hopes to see an influx of Dominicans living overseas who work in the hospitality industry to assist in the soon-to-be booming tourism sector here. My hope and uh, my dream is to build the country to a level where our citizens who are resident in these islands and elsewhere would um, be um, motivated to return to work. Um, and, and, and this is starting to happen, you know, um, Dominicans, we no longer are retired Dominicans returning to Dominica. Young people have returned to sell their businesses to, 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 to gain employment in Dominica. Now that we have these hotels, these five-star hotels and many of them coming on stream, then they will be, and of course the salaries will be on par, then people will start coming in. Um, so we're going to need Dominicans to return with their experience, with their knowledge, and, in, and, not only, and not only have it exposed to our guests, but impart it to the rest of us who are resident in Dominica, who, who certainly would need the training to take us from the two star and three star to the four star and to the five star and to, even to the six star. On the medical scene, efforts to stabilize Dominica's health sector are bearing fruit. This as Dominica has welcomed the contingent of Cuban nurses to its shores. Minister for Health and Social Services, Dr. Kenneth Daru, says the arrival of more Cuban medical professionals to the country is in direct response to the concerning situation of several nurses leaving after Hurricane Maria. We had this serious situation back home where a number of nurses were leaving. And I recall the, my minister colleague, uh, my Cuban minister of, health, of public health in Cuba, his exact words were, my friend, just tell us what you need and we will be there to help. And I really want to really tell you that this, this particular trip to Cuba and this commitment made to us by the Cuban government went a long way, a long, long way into stabilizing the nursing situation that I really want to thank you and the government. 
Cuba also reaffirmed its commitment to helping Dominica's development however it can. Among the people of and government of the Caribbean and Cuba, and especially with the people of Dominica, there is a historical friendship and a high level of exchange and understanding. Cuba has ratified that position, reaffirming its commitment to maintain cooperation in areas that need it and that we can offer. Our country maintains its solid principle despite of the economic, commercial and financial blockade of the United government against Cuba. Close to 60 Cuban healthcare providers are currently on island assisting the healthcare system. We have among us some 20, sorry, 59 Cuban healthcare providers providing care throughout the length and breadth of Dominica this time. Over some 22 medical doctors and 14 specialists. We have, competing with that, we have also around 59 nurses, laboratory technologists, biomedical engineer. Cuba is not only helping to transform our health sector in providing technical assistance but also in training our healthcare professionals. At present we have over 90% of our medical doctors in the district of Cuba and trade. In other top stories, the Faculty of Health Sciences of the Dominica State College to benefit from a $37,000 simulation lab. The lab was officially opened on Wednesday and was made possible through the efforts of medical professionals on mission MPOM. The lab is used by medical students to practice the theories learnt in the classroom before applying these practices to patients or clients. The Skills Assimilation Lab was created in partnership with a number of other organizations including the Clinton Global Initiative and has a long-term vision to extend the level of education offered to the medical students. I came down two months ago, I believe it was, with as a delegate with the Clinton Foundation and with Direct Relief, who is the sponsor for this project, we decided to broaden this project. So it's not just going to be within the lab, but the students will be able to do distance learning as well, because we'll have the projector set up, they'll be able to see um, other universities in the U.S. having programs and be able to to be part of that as well. So that is our long-term goal for this. So as of May 15, 2019, this um, simulation lab is now a partnership with the Clinton Global Initiative Project. Several Dominicans based overseas have already pledged their assistance towards the success and longevity of the simulation lab. For this lab, we also have a, a few diaspora who are actually actively involved in planning and they will be continuing with uh, working closely with Dean Casey in ensuring that the students have the same level of education we, we have in the U.S. here. Um, my sister, Vanessa Scotland, she created the lab, uh, lab curriculum and she will be doing simulation model, modules for the, for the skills lab because she's a nursing professor in Ohio. We have also retired, recently retired, Dr. Agathin Scotland who promised to volunteer in any way she is needed. And we have a number of nurses who are working in New York, in Maryland. The Skills Assimilation Lab will not only be used by DSC medical students, but by the wider medical profession in Dominica. A simulation lab, as I said, is critical in training health professionals because it prepares the, the students with the standards that are international that can be used anywhere in the world and help ensure them safety and people's lives are protected when they go to work. And one of the things we hope that in the future, the Ministry of Health people are here, that the continuing education will, the nurses at the health, National Health Hospital will have the opportunity to do continuing education here at the lab. And as Ms. Scotland pointed out with some of the other health service delivery systems, um, EMT and fire can all be trained here. On to housing matters, Prime Minister Scarlett insists that irrespective of where they live, Dominicans must have the same high-quality housing. 
Mr. Skerritt made the comment on Wednesday as he led a delegation on a tour of government housing projects in Georgetown and Cotton Hill and other areas in the north. Over 70 housing units have so far recently been handed over to displaced billet seven residents in the Bellevue Chopin area. The Prime Minister says he believes housing units in and outside of the city should be of the same high quality and standards. Here is how he addressed the matter at a rally in Antigua on the weekend. I would not build, my dear brothers and sisters, a T111 plywood house for myself, my wife, my children, and therefore I will not build it for the Dominican people. Rome was not built in a day, and so too shall we not rush the building of the new Dominica and compromise the safety and well-being of its people. Mr. Skerritt says he has embarked upon building a climate-resilient nation, and he is on course to doing just that. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. Tene et bien tout se, moun ki an bon santé au li ouin ka wespiwe se vemin lan. Moun ki pani bon te pe waman kon sa ki ni maladi HIV, alcohol, kafime, ti mamay e gwa moun bien sensible pou se maladi sa la. Moun ki ka tout se ni pou pran pokosyon le yo an pami moun an plas publik. Kouve bouchou le ou ka estene et tout se. Visite dokte ou e bien plas santé ou. Fini tout tretman yo ba ou pou sa jwen djewizon e pi maladi tibi. An responsabilite ou, ede dou bout simen maladi tibi e HIV, protege kou e lezo. Welcome back. A warning from Police Chief Daniel Carbon that the police remains committed to protecting politicians and the wider citizenry. The police chief told DBS News he is aware of a statement which has gone viral on social media threatening to kill the Prime Minister. Chief Carbon is warning that it is an offense to make inflammatory statements to incite violence that borders criminality on social media. He says the police will act appropriately if anyone uses social media in that way. On the political scene, DLP candidate for Rosa Central, Melissa Skerritt, says she never intended to get into active politics until she saw the despair on the faces of residents after Hurricane Maria. Mrs. Skerritt says as a businesswoman, community activist and humanitarian, she was inspired by her husband's response to the impact of Hurricane Maria. The days after September 19, 2017 changed everything for me. I was very touched by the Prime Minister's determination to fight against the very high odds to build back a new Dominica. I was in earshot when my husband recounted the scenes of mass destruction. I was there when he appealed to the region and the world for help and assistance. I was next to him when he tossed and turned that night, unable to sleep because of the suffering of many of his people and him not knowing the whereabouts of quite a few too many. Those were very testing times for all Dominicans. I traveled with the Prime Minister to many corners of the island, and I saw for myself the magnitude of the devastation. Mrs. Skerritt says she was touched by the hopelessness and desperation in the eyes of the people. She says she subsequently told her husband of her readiness to serve in whatever capacity. She says her ultimate decision to enter politics was divinely inspired, even if her husband was not initially in favor of it. One day, while praying, the Almighty Father placed on my heart the idea of running Roso. I must admit that I fought with this for some time. But ladies and gentlemen, when God calls you to fulfill his purpose and his plans, you cannot say no. And so 
I shared this with the Prime Minister and that as a God-fearing woman and a patriotic Dominican, that it was my will to serve wherever he would have me because I recognized there was a tremendous amount of work to be done. The Prime Minister, in his usual manner, showed no intention one way or the other. And then he turned the issue of the selection of the candidate for Rosso Central over to the people of Rosso and particularly to scientific polling. The 40th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, got underway in St. Lucia on Wednesday. High on the agenda are measures to be implemented to enhance the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME. Heads of government are expected to build on decisions taken at the 18th special meeting in Trinidad in December. These include the expansion of categories of skilled nationals entitled to move and work freely within the community. It also includes agriculture workers, beauty service practitioners, barbers, and security guards, ensuring community-wide recognition of CARICOM skill certificates issued by member states. The meeting, which ends on Friday, is being held under the chairmanship of St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Alan Shasney. And the CARICOM Secretariat is putting a framework in place to ensure the commitments made by heads of government are met in a timely manner. CARICOM Secretary General Erwin LaRocque told HTS News Force in St. Lucia, measures are being taken to ensure timely implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy. LaRocque met with media representatives ahead of Wednesday's meeting of CARICOM heads in St. Lucia. For instance, give you an example of issues where I think that we are lagging behind that ought not to be lagging behind. The heads of government have agreed so far on 10 categories plus two for free movement in our community. I say 10 plus 2 because we have agreed on two additional, but the technical work to govern, to, to inform what will be the requirement for movement is still being done. So it is not yet operationalized. But the 10 categories plus agriculture workers and security personnel um, is what we're looking at as two new categories to be added. We have to show results for what we're doing. And the Caribbean Development Bank has been very, very um, helpful in working with us, um, financing um, a resource-based management system, not only for the Secretariat, but for the regional institutions, as well as for member states. We're actually going to be proposing to the member states that they need now need to do that, um, so that one can be accountable for the commitments that are made um, when, you, when, you, when you do so at a meeting. Um, very often, it's not a secret, um, commitments are made and the, the, the dates pass and we haven't done it. tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. To end the news, the headlines again. The opening of Cabritz Resort Kempinski later this year to transform the North. A new cohort of Cuban nurses to improve the nursing profession impacted by migration. And the Faculty of Health Sciences of the Dominica State College opens a new medical skills assimilation lab. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.